Good morning and greetings from South Georgia, USA. The 14th of August, right? Yes. 2024. All right, we have got a beautiful morning this morning. I would say it is uh, mostly cloudy, but the clouds are burning off already. I guess we're about nine o'clock in the morning, maybe a little earlier. Out here feeding, feeding the deer. <coughs> Eight o'clock in the morning is what it is. Eastern Standard Time. Sun's been up about an hour, I guess. We are still expecting that rare cool air coming down from Canada to give us an early fall. And we are, nobody is complaining about that because we have had about two weeks of the kind of weather that South Georgia is famous for, or you might say infamous, hot and muggy. Nice in the morning, up till about 10 or 11 o'clock, and then it's time to get in some kind of a sheltered situation until Late in the evening, it turns pleasant again. The deer are definitely feeling the change of season in that they are beginning to rut, beginning to clean their antlers off, rubbing them against trees, getting ready for the inevitable conclusion of the breeding cycle. School just started back around here a couple of days ago. And the parents that are responsible for the children are scrambling to get them to school or to the school bus or what, however they get to school. Life goes on day after day, it seems. Now there's a little rutting behavior right there with the fallow buck trying to run a doe down and she just finally lay down on the ground. He was definitely singling her out. We noticed the cows were cutting up yesterday afternoon, bellowing and bawling. So they're into the, <clears throat> apparently have the same uh, fall rutting season as the deer.
I don't trust the news anymore. I hear the news. But I think that there's two sources of news. One is probably the truth. And the one that you hear the most is probably propaganda and lies. So I really just listen, but I don't make any decisions based on what I hear. Because I think a lot of what we hear is, like I said, propaganda. There is one piece of good news that I would like to tell you about. And it is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeshua the Messiah. Yeshua HaMashiach. The Savior came as prophesied in the Bible some 2,400 years ago. I don't guess it was 2,400. This is 2024. Two thousand and twenty-four years ago. I get confused about that. It was a while back. Presented himself to his nation, Israel, as the God, King, Priest. And was rejected by the majority and since he couldn't lie he told them who he was that he was the prophesied Messiah the Son of Man That he was the I am. That he existed before the foundation of the world. He told the truth. And I guess you know the rest of the story. Ungodly men wicked men who could not see God when they were looking Him in the face, conspired to have Him executed and crucified, thinking that they would be done with Him, not realizing that they were setting in motion their own destruction because, of course, you can't kill God. Now, they killed his human body form. But Jesus had control over that also. And he was able to raise himself from the dead. And he promised to do the same for those who believed in Him. He promised that if you would confess Him, confess that He was the Christ, the Son of the living God, that He would cause you to be born again as a new creation, separate from the earthly, fleshly man that we all are. If you're curious about Jesus, I'd say that's the first step. 
And by curious, I mean, do you wonder who he is? I don't say who he was, because in my opinion, he still is and always will be. But who is this man that was crucified and raised himself from the dead? and promised all of these marvelous promises to those that would believe in Him. Promise of eternal life. In a place where there would be no more tears. No more death. I don't know what we'll be doing there. We can guess. I, I, I expect, I wouldn't be surprised if God was not through creating <clears throat> worlds and universes. That the kingdom of heaven will grow and grow and grow. And fill the universe or multiple universes with the truth that God is good and that evil will ultimately be destroyed permanently and cast into the lake of fire and disappear. Now, some people just think this is some kind of a pipe dream. Well, who would have thought of such a thing? What human being could come up with an idea like that? There's no hint of that in an earthly existence. But yet we do yearn for such a thing. We have a desire in our hearts to have eternal life. That this is not the end. Jesus made those promises. You can read it in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus promised that there would be a time when God would judge the fleshly world and destroy the fleshly world and replace it with a spiritual world. Well, I didn't make this stuff up. It's in the Bible. Millions upon millions of people have believed this in the past and have gone to their sleep awaiting Jesus. And millions and millions and millions believe it now, who are alive now. And are doing their bit to spread that good news. That there is eternal life for those who are curious enough to ask Jesus, Who are you? Please show me. Is it true that you're God? I want to know. And Jesus promised that he would tell you. So I am urging anyone out there within the sound or the hearing of my voice, if you are curious, you can essentially pass from death 
that is your mortal life into a life of immortality. Now, it's not the same kind of life. It's a spiritual life. Because flesh and blood does not mix with the spirit. It's like oil and water. You can't mix oil and water. They separate. You can't mix flesh with the spirit world. God has made that abundantly clear to us because we see death. There's plenty of it around so that we don't, wouldn't be confused that this life does not go on in the flesh. You can make it as hard as you want. You can just go ahead and ask Him, Jesus, who are you? Would you show me who you are? And I would say that very shortly he will make it clear who he is to you. It's a very difficult thing for people to do. Nobody understands exactly why some people ask and some people don't. It's a mystery. Not a whole lot of point in trying to answer it because I don't believe it can be answered. If you're curious about it, if you've heard people, and I know most of you have, because millions of Jesus' followers are telling the world about Him. And they are advising anyone who is interested to ask, Jesus, who are you? Please show me. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. The way, not one of the ways, the truth, not one of many truths, and the life. Not one of many different kinds of life. The life. That life is Jesus. He is God. Now I'm telling you that as one who used to not believe it, but I just kept hearing it. And thank God I was curious enough to finally say, Jesus Show me who you are. I don't take any credit from that, for that. I have no idea why. I finally asked. I may as well try to figure out why I was born. I have no idea why or how I got born in 1951. But I know it happened because here I am. And I know that at a certain time in my life, I finally said, Jesus, okay, show me who you are. And he did make it very clear in my mind who he was. And that at that time I realized, hey, that's what I was born for. To ask that question and to get that answer. I don't know how it happened. I don't know why it happened, but I do remember when it happened. I remember the very night that I said, Jesus, who are you? Now, Jesus sometimes reveals himself to people in other ways than them asking. Well, maybe they ask in their heart and don't even realize because we don't know. He can read your mind and your heart and know. You may not necessarily 
remember asking him. But I know if you want to get it, get the job done and go ahead and get it over with, just ask him, Jesus, who are you? You notice he's been around for a while. He's all over the world. There have been famous professors and philosophers throughout the ages who predicted that the that Christianity would go away and that Jesus would go away and be forgotten. But that's not what's happening. He's getting more and more well-known and more and more powerful. The kingdom of heaven is growing. And I expect that it will continue to grow. And the tree of life will get larger and larger and larger and fill the entire universe. And I think multiple universes with the beings that have asked Jesus to save them. I do want to caution you to be careful not to think it's by your own efforts that you do finally ask Jesus. Because we can't do anything good because we're not good. So I say, praise be to God for Allowing it to happen, for having mercy on us, I have no idea how it works. But just be careful that you don't start thinking that you've done something to believe. Because you will make the inevitable mistake of self-righteousness, which is common to all uh, new believers, and that is to th start to think that if I could choose Jesus, then why can't that slob over there choose Jesus? And that then is a way of you judging. And I fell into that trap, but I quickly was taught by the Holy Spirit that that was false belief, that I had nothing to do with it, and that God had mercy on me according to His will. That's the good news that I wanted to tell you today. I believe that news is true. It is not fake news. It is the news of the Gospel. Jesus is alive and well, and He is returning, and He is calling everyone to come to Him and let Him give you a new heart. This is the job as I see it, is to tell people this. Spread the Gospel. I am aware that I cannot cause anyone to believe. But I can tell them the story of Jesus and I can tell them the Gospel. Jesus is the one that draws. Jesus is the one that reveals. Flesh and blood cannot reveal who Jesus is. I can tell you, but I can't make you see it. He can make you see it, though. Ask Him. All right, we'd like to say the Lord's Prayer here and wind up this little session. We'd like you to say it with us wherever you are in the world.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.